Welcome to a new seasonal series of videos called What's This? brought to you by the Illinois State Parks Park Naturalists. Hi, my name is Lisa Sons and I am a naturalist for the Illinois Department of Natural Resources here in the state of Illinois. And this is the beginning of a new series of videos called What's This? You're going to hear from several of the naturalists that work for the state of Illinois throughout the year on different things that spark our curiosity in nature. We are starting off with the summer season. So we are here at Starbrock State Park Prairie Garden located just behind the visitor center. And I am gonna talk about a really neat insect called the spittle bug. Spittle bugs are also called frog hoppers. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that, but let's see what we can find. So as I'm looking around, gross! I noticed that someone or something has spit on the plants in the prairie garden. Oh, it's okay. It's not really spit. That is the encasement of a spittle bug. So what happens is that in fall and winter, a female frog hopper will land on a plant and they'll lay their egg. That egg will overwinter. Then comes spring, usually here in Illinois, the month of May into early June. That egg will hatch, and what comes out of it is a nymph. A nymph is not quite an adult frog hopper. It doesn't have the same shape or size. Here's a picture here that I'll show you. But that nymph is pretty vulnerable, so they need to provide protection while they're feasting on the plant. So once they hatch, they get to work with their piercing straw-like mouth. They stab the plant stem and start drinking the plant water from cells called the xylem. As they're drinking that plant water, well, what happens when most of us drink a lot of water? We have to go to the bathroom, right? Spittlebug's no different. They have to do something with all of that plant water they just ingested. So what do they do? They make the best out of a worse situation and they create a nest, a frothy foam out of their waste. Now you're thinking gross, they live in their own poop. Yeah, pretty much. What happens is that they excrete the waste through their butts and as they're doing so, they have a cavity in their abdomen, their belly, that stores air. And they whip that up into this frothy foam that looks like spit, and it surrounds them. So this spit actually serves several very important purposes for this insect. One, it provides protection from predators. Two, it provides moisture, it helps keep the insect from drying out. And three, this enables them a safe space from the heat and the cold to where they can go through several molts. Molts are changes in their body to where once they're done after 40 to 52 days, they will emerge from the spit as an adult frog hopper. Why are they called frog hoppers? They're called frog hoppers because of the shape of their body shown here. The frog hopper kind of looks like a frog, slender in front, a little bit larger in the back, and they're able to leap very long distances. So they are leaping from leaf to leaf to eat food as an adult frog hopper. And the spit pretty much vanishes by that time. Do spittle bugs harm plants? Well, there are over 60 species in North America, and some of them can harm plants if there are a large concentration within a given area. But for the most part, just let them be, let them do their spittle bug job and enjoy the gross spit on your plants. Hey, so I'm Trooper Kayla here at Pure Market State Park in Grafton, and this is one of my favorite books, Good Bug, Bad Bug. Um, a lot of people have been asking me lately, what is this bug? And it's the brown marmated stink bug. It is an invasive species from Asia, and you guys will know a stink bug when you see it. It's got, it's like a shield shape, and they will let out a stinky smell whenever they are alarmed or endangered. And a good thing that you can do with stink bugs if you find them 
is used them as fishing bait. The brown marmorated stink bug is an insect in the family Pentatomidae. Penta meaning five. You can see the five sides of it here. One, two, three, four, five. These insects are agricultural pests that can cause millions of dollars of damage. And a lot of people experience whenever the crops are cleared from the fields, these insects will swarm to the houses nearby. So ways that we can use them include fishing bait. So you take your stink bug here you put it on your hook. Oh. Fish on! Fish on! Look at the fish! Look at dinner! <laughs> That's a lunker! Whoo! Smells like it's been seasoned with stink bug. Okay, today here at Fort Messick, we're gonna look at a different type of bug, the clover mite. So come on over here. You see this is a garbage can. A lot of times you'll find clover mites on garbage cans, benches, windowsills, all sorts of places. Now clover mites are most uh, closely related to ticks, spiders. They're not actually insects, uh, but they do not feed on blood like ticks do. Um, they like to eat clover. An interesting thing about clover mites is that they only live about two weeks, and if you accidentally smush one, you'll get a red stain on you. Um, it's not blood that you're getting on you, it's actually the pigment that they have on their bodies, and they're bright red. So come on over and we'll see if we can find one. Clover mites are most abundant in the spring and fall. Most importantly, they're not harmful to humans or pets. Welcome to Giant City State Park. Nature Nerd John here. Today we're going to take a closer look at the monarch butterfly. Now if you'll look behind me, we've got all of these tall green plants with these really pretty clusters of flowers at the top. This is called milkweed and it is an important food source for the monarch caterpillar. Let's take a closer look and see if we can see a monarch egg. There are four stages in the life of a monarch butterfly. The egg, the larva or caterpillar, the pupa or chrysalis, and the adult butterfly. There are four generations of monarchs that emerge in a year, and what's really special is that the fourth generation does not die after the regular two to six week life cycle. Instead, these monarchs take an amazing migration journey thousands of miles away to warmer climates and live for six to eight months. Hey, my name's Jackie Cullison, Natural Resources Coordinator here at Bellwood State Park. This is one of my favorite times of the year when the prairie plants are in full bloom and the pollinators are busy at work. Hey, there's a zebra swallowtail butterfly. Zebra swallowtail butterflies are easy to identify with their black and white striped pattern and long sword-like tails. The wing spread of an adult is two and a half to four inches. Adults are nectar feeders. This butterfly uses its proboscis to extract nectar from the butterfly weed. Throughout our old growth forest, you can find understory trees known as pawpaws. They are the only host plant for zebra swallowtail caterpillars. The leaves of pawpaws contain acetogenins, which are toxic to mammals, birds, and chewing insects. As the caterpillars consume the pawpaw leaves, the toxic compounds are retained within their bodies and even into the adult form. This ultimately gives them a defense mechanism that aids against predators. If you're in the area, stop by. Take a walk through the prairie or around the pollination garden. See just how many insects you can find. Thank you for joining us for a What's This? Come back this fall for a new What's This? Explaining why those leaves change color.